Hello. Today we will study Bloom filter. Bloom filter is a space efficient probabilistic data structure that is used to check the membership of an element. That is, we check whether an element is already present in the given data set or not. Uh, let's say, for example, when we all create an account in Gmail and we choose a username let's say we choose a username xyz it very quickly gives us reply whether xyz is an available user net username or not so how does it work gmail has already stored all the usernames which are registered with it when we are trying to choose a new username it checks whether that username is already taken or not if it is already taken it does not allows us to take that username can we do this using linear search? Yes, we can do it, but we will not get the reply so fast. So the answer to this is bloom filter. A bloom filter very quickly gives you the result whether a data item is already present or not. A bloom filter can give us false positives, but it never gives an answer which is false negative. What do we mean by false positive? False positive means that a username is, the, we will get an answer that username is already present, but it might not be already present in the given data set. But a false negative means that a username is present and we get a result that username is not present. So the properties of Bloom filter, Bloom filter is of fixed size. It can represent a set with an arbitrarily large number of elements that makes it quite suitable for big data. Bloom filter will never generate false negative. Again, what do we mean by false negative? That a username is already present. A username is already taken and Bloom filter gives a result that it is not taken. This is an example of false negative. Bloom filter will never give us false negative results, but yes, it can give us false positive results. Deleting an element from Bloom filter is not possible, while we can always add any element to the Bloom filter. So let's see how a bloom filter works. A bloom filter takes arbitrarily large size of an array and initially all elements of array as are set as zero as we can see in this example. In bloom filter we will have n number of hash functions. Whenever we want to enter any particular uh, value into a into this bloom filter we apply that value to all hash functions when we apply that value to all hash functions we will get some result what what is a hash function a hash function is a function to which when we give some input we get output so if i have to enter one particular value to a bloom filter and i have three hash functions i will take that value and then i will apply that hash uh, that value to each of the hash function when i will apply the value to the hash function i will get three different outputs let's say the outputs are 1 4 and 7 let's say the outputs are 1 4 and 7 so what happens the output is 1 4 and 7 so initially my array was all zeros after getting uh, output as 1 4 and 7 these bits bit number 1 bit number 4 and bit number 7 will be set as 1 now let's take an example so in this example let us assume that we have three hash functions h1 h2 and h3 it can be any hash function your hash function can be calculate the number of alphabets in the given word and then take a mod of it with 10 or mod of it with 5 we can have any hash function and suppose we want to enter xyz into the given bloom filter so as we have just discussed initially all the elements of array are set as zero then we want to enter xyz and we have 
three hash functions. I want to enter value x, y, z into my Bloom filter and I have three hash functions. I will take this x, y, z and apply it to hash function 1. When we apply any value to hash function, we get some output. So the output in this case is 1. Same thing, I take that input x, y, z and apply it to hash function 2. I will get an output. The output in this case is 4. Similarly, we apply this value x, y, z to the hash third hash function, the last hash function, and we get output 7. So, initially, my array had all zeros. After applying these values to hash function, I have output 1, 4, and 7. So, in my array, I will set bit 1. I will set bit 1 bit 4 and bit 7 as 1. So you can see it this in the diagram. I have set bit 1, bit 4 and bit 7 as 1. Why? Because the answer of applying the input value x, y, z to the three hash functions was 1, 4 and 7. Now again, I want to uh, enter one more value into my Bloom filter which is ABC. What do we do? Again the same thing. I will take ABC and apply it to hash function 1. We get some output. Let's say we get 3. To hash function 2, we get answer as 5. To hash function 3 and we get answer as 4. Let's see, initially my this was the state of my Bloom filter. That means bit number 1, 4 and 7 was set 1. After, after uh, adding ABC, we have a, to again set bit number 3, 5 and 4 to 1. Bit number 4 is already 1, so we just have to set bit number 3 and 5 as 1. You can see here, after entering x, y, z, bit number 1, bit number 4 and bit number 7 was 1. After entering a, b, c, bit number 3, bit number 4 and bit number 5 becomes 1. So, similarly, if we want to add more elements to this Bloom filter, we repeat the same process. We take that input value, apply it to all three hash functions, we will get some output and then we set those bits to 1. Now, we have entered all the values into my Bloom filter. Now, I want to check whether that whether a particular number, whether a particular value is present in the Bloom filter or not. How do we do it? So, I want to check whether x, y, z is present or not. We do the same thing but in reverse order. Now, I will apply x, y, z to all three functions. I will get values 1, 4 and 7. Now, this was the last update of my Bloom filter. You can see. After uh, inputting A, B, C, bit number 1, 3, 4, 5 and 7 were set 1. So, this was the last update of my Bloom filter. Now, uh, now we are checking whether X, Y, Z is present or not. I have applied X, Y, Z to hash number, uh, hash function 1, then to hash function 2 and then to hash function 3. I got answer 1, 4 and 7. Now, I am going to check bit number 1, bit number 4 and bit number 7. I hope you are understanding why I am checking bit number 1, 4 and 7 because this was the result received after applying the input to the three hash functions. Now, if bit number 1, 4 and 7, all three bits are 1, then only we say that the element is probably present. I repeat, if all the bits are set 1, then only we say that the element is probably present. But if any one of the single bit is 0, any one of the single bit among 1, 4 and 7 is 0, then we can conclude that the, that particular element is definitely not present. By this, we can check whether any, any element is present in the Bloom filter or not using the same procedure. Thank you. Thanks for watching.